This is part four of our negotiation book, Distributive Bargaining. So here is the introduction to distributive bargaining. Let's take a quick look. Now, the reason I like to begin with this idea of distributive is because I think we've all been a little bit fooled by our business classes where we often talk about win-win. Don't we always learn about win-win? It's something everyone talks about. It's so easy to say. It's so easy to just be happy about win-win. We want win-win everything. But you know, in negotiation, this idea of win-win uh, is just an idea. It's very rare that it actually happens that way. We're going to learn more about why when we do our follow-up and the next chapter in the book. But right now, I just want to introduce the basic concept of this distributed idea. So one really good way to think of a distributed situation is a basketball team or a basketball game. And of course, when you play basketball, everybody knows that uh, every time you get a basket, it's uh, two points, right? Unless it's a you know long shot. So let's say you get two points. Now, if you have two teams and one team gets two points, what happens to the other team? Well, they don't get anything, right? One team gets two and one team doesn't get two. Let's say that the first team gets another two points, so now they've got four points and the other team has zero. Okay, I understand that. Now the other team gets two points, so one team has four and one team has two. This four and two is the same as zero and two, right? You just, you know, subtract it out, right? So if they get two and they get two, or they don't have two, they don't have two, you see? What I'm trying to say is that the score doesn't really matter as much as every time one team gets something, the other team is losing something. It's the same as losing. Now, we don't usually think about it that way because we're always adding to the scores. We're not subtracting, right? So it's four to two, and they get a basket. Now they're going to have six. We don't say, oh, they stay at four and they go to zero, but we could. It'd be the same thing, right? So this idea of when one side wins, the other side loses, or when one side gets something, the other side loses something, and when one side gains something, the other side loses something, this is really very common, and I would say normal, and almost always the case in negotiation. Now, you can talk about win-win, and we're going to cover that later, but in distributive bargaining, which is the norm, this is really what happens. So let's look at this a little bit more closely, uh, this idea of distributive. We can go ahead and call distributive simply win-lose because it means that as one side gets something, the other side loses something. And the word we're going to use in class is distributive bargaining. Distributive bargaining, win-lose. Every time one side gains, the other side loses. So in distributive bargaining, we often think about this idea of if I lose something, the other side gains something. Now, I'm, I think this is the way that you often do think about your personal negotiation because you just don't like to lose. But at the same time, winning has the opposite effect. When you gain something, the other side loses something. So in a way, the other side is punished by your winning. So, of course, what's our goal in business? Well, we would rather be on the winning side than the losing side, right? So how are we going to be on the winning side rather than the losing side? We need to be honest with ourselves and understand that there is this win-lose situation. And don't believe that it's win-win unless you're really 100% positive it is. Because if you believe it's win-win or you want it to be win-win, you say, oh, let's win-win. I'll do what you want and you do what I want and we'll all win. But it's not win-win to the other side, then you're going to be the one that loses. So we don't want that to happen. So we need to really be thinking about this idea of maximizing how much I get, maximizing how much I win, even though it's at the cost of the other side. Now, why is this the case? Why cannot everything just be win-win? Why is the world not easy and simple? Well, the, the answer to that is resources. Resources are limited. So in a situation where resources are limited, not everyone can get everything they want. 
So if one side gets some more, the other side is going to have to lose. And this is this idea of fixed or limited resources. That's really the situation that makes it a win-lose negotiation context. What is a simple example? I think one really easy example we all understand is something like eBay or Yahoo auctions. Now how does an auction work? Well, I think we're all very familiar with auctions, aren't we? In an auction, somebody wants to sell something and somebody else wants to buy something. So in this example, we can say there's someone like Bob and he wants to sell his notebook computer. So he's going to sell his notebook computer online. So he goes online and he's going to and try to sell it. John wants to buy an online computer and he will, he's going to buy it used because he wants to get something cheap. So that's part of his goal. So every dollar that John increases his bid is one more dollar that Bob will make. So when the buyer increases the price, the seller will make one more dollar of that price and the buyer will lose one more dollar <laughs> in that sale, right? In that transaction. So because John is only going to buy one notebook and Bob is only selling one notebook, they're not going to really know each other in the future, are they? So this relationship is really a zero relationship. So they can ask themselves, uh, each side can ask themselves, what's the strategy they're going to do? And they can ask themselves about this question. How important is the outcome of this negotiation now? And how important is the future relationship? And as I say, if you're buying a notebook online, probably it's zero relationship because you're going to be just buying it one time. After this one time, you'll never talk to this person or see this person again. In a distributive negotiation, of course, your goal needs to be to win. Now, if your goal is to lose, that doesn't really make sense. If you're in a distributive negotiation, that is, I'm going to buy something, it's important to me now, and you know the relationship is not important, so I need to try to win, and the other side will have to lose that for everything I win. If I'm going to lose in the end, I might as well just not negotiate. In other words, if I'm going to pay more for the notebook computer than it's worth to me, because I've already decided what my goal package is, then I should just not negotiate, not do it. I need to try to win. And this is a key part of our RPG. A lot of students kind of forget this when they play the RPG. You really need to be trying to win if it's a distributive negotiation, which it almost always is. Almost always it's about this win-lose situation. So it's important for you to get this attitude. I'm going to try to win. I really need to try my best to win. And everything I can get is something that the other side gives me and that they lose. And I need to get as much as I can. So this idea of um, the auction online where every dollar counts because every dollar is going to be one dollar that one side gets and the other side loses. Now, of course, we can talk about the limits right, the resistance points, how much is Bob willing to, uh, what's his limit, and how much is John willing to uh, limit, what's his limit. So these are the limits, and if they go over the limits, they can just walk away, they're not going to sell. And I think on an auction you can actually do that, right, you can just go ahead and cancel the auction, or you can just go ahead and say that the auction is not meeting your minimum price requirement, right. So auctions actually have this built in, this idea. Okay, so again, I want to emphasize, and it's really important because I this is my biggest um, hesitation or problem in our class is that most of our students are very young, they don't have a lot of experience in business, and they just say, well, this is an assignment, I just do the best I can. And, and if everybody can be happy, everybody be happier. In Taiwan, people say, oh, pass, everybody do okay is okay. But in negotiation, that is not the way it works. In our RPG, in our game, it's kind of fixed into the game that you really need to try to win. Now that, that doesn't mean if you win, the other side is going to suffer or get do horrible. It does mean that the more you get, the other side gets less. But then another time, they'll play against another team and they'll try to do their best and get as much as they can, and another team will do a little bit worse. So if all the teams work harder, actually the whole negotiation for everyone, the quality goes up. 
But that's very different than if everyone just says, oh, well, whatever you want, we'll just cut it in half and we'll just compromise and you get half, I get half, we're all happy. That makes the negotiation value go down. The whole, what I call the market valuation, the whole valuation of all of the exchange going on. So it really helps to push, to win. Get that thinking in your head. I'm going to win this negotiation. This is a distributive negotiation and I have to push on it. And everything I give, every two points in this game is going to put me behind. I need to get ahead. Good luck.